Hi, welcome everyone. Egunon um, ongia torri um, eta kaixo. Um, welcome to the presentation, the introduction to Basque. Um, I'm just first gonna um, introduce myself. So I'm Cyril, I'm Finnish, but I live in Barcelona and I study Basque um, because it's an interesting language. And um, the first time I actually heard um, Basque was uh, 13 years ago in Iceland. Um, I had a friend uh, who was working in a nearby farm because I was I was an au pair. I was living in a small fishing village. And one day my friend, um, he had a DVD about Bas the Basque country. And I remember asking if we could watch it in Basque because I wanted to hear what it sounds like. And um, I remember just watching the beautiful landscape and hearing this language that I had, I didn't understand a word. And I thought, okay, I have to learn this one. And it actually took me 10 years to be able to, to study uh, properly in a language school, but it was worth the wait. Um, and whenever I tell anyone that I, I'm learning Basque, everyone is like, okay, what is Basque? And is it spoken anywhere? Like, is there, is there a Basque country or something? So yes, um, Basque <laughs> is a language and it's spoken in the Basque country. So if this is the map of the world, it's spoken here. I might have been a bit too enthusiastic with the size of the the mark, but it's here, and it's called uh, Euskal Herria, uh, the Basque country in Basque. And um, Basque in Basque is Euskara. There are some variants um, depending on the dialect, so it can be. Euskera, Esquara, Euskara, Esquara, Oscara, Euskala. Um, it has many names, but the standard name in Basque is Euskara. And it means um, the way of speaking, the way of uh, talking. Um, it comes from uh, the, the verb uh, enauzi, um, which now is esan, and it means to talk or to speak. And um, and the, the suffix kara, so it means a way of, of speaking. There are some other um, hypotheses as well, um, but this is the most probable. And it's a language isolate, which means that it doesn't have any known living relatives. Um, people have like people have tried to connect it with every language in the world, even Finnish. Um, but now the most probable explanation is that it's um, it's, an, it's a language isolate, so it doesn't have any any um, other relative sister languages. Um, but we are going to talk about that a bit later. And as you can see in the map, the area is not that big. It's uh, in northern Spain and in southern France, and I like to see it as a as a little heart. Um, and there are less than a million speakers, native speakers. This also varies between like sources, um, but it, it's less than a million. And the flag is called Icurriña. Sometimes you see it with the with the Ñ, like the Basque letter, um, the Spanish letter, sorry. Um, but because of the pronunciation in Basque, it's not actually needed. It's Icurriña. And it was created in 1894 um, by um, two founders of the Basque Nationalist Party. Um, and it wasn't really used until 1979 because of Franco. And we'll talk about that later. But that's Icurriña. And um, here you can see the heart that I mentioned earlier. And this is the Basque country. So this part here, um, 
this is the this is actually the border. So this is France and this is Spain. Um, there are seven provinces, or yeah, and um, so uh, the you can imagine that even though it's a small place, there are quite a few dialects or like the way people speak at home and with the, like especially the older um, Basque people. Um, so there are five dialects, five historic dialects. Um, there's one, uh, there's uh, Vizcayera here, and then Gibuzquera here, um, Nafar La Purtarra here, uh, Nafarrera, and uh, Suverotarra. But um, the uh, the best that you hear um, on the TV and in the radio, and that you read on the newspaper and if you go to school in Basque, the Basque you learn is Euskara Batua. Um, so it's a unified standard Basque, and we I'll explain that later again. Um, I found this very nice um, picture uh, on Omniglot, the website Omni Omniglot, um, and it shows the Basque alphabet with the Basque typeface that's like used in like bars and, and restaurant names and whenever you want to show some ba more Basque in, in, in your words, you can use this typeface. And there are some letters that are not used in, in, in Basque, but they are still here in the alphabet because of loan words or proper names like, um, like for example, Q and uh, V, usually V, in loan words is replaced by B. So like video is video. And um, here are, I have some examples of the, of the words and how to pronounce them. So for example, this one here, iskunza, uh, it means a language. And here you can see, if I say it again, iskunza. The H is not pronounced. And uh, the, the Z is like a, a sharp S, so iskunza. Then here you have chistor, so chistor. This is like a ch sound. Uh, chistorra is a type of, of sausage. Um, and next to it, you have mushu. Usually it's spelled with an S, but I, uh, but this is like more, familiar or like friendly or cuter version. So mushu uh, is a kiss. And then here under iskunza you have tioro. Tioro. So it's a very, it's like almost like a TJ, you could think, tioro. Uh, tioro is a fish soup. Uh, I have never tried it, but I would like to. And here is the ikurriña, the, the flag that I mentioned, so the N becomes um, softer, <laughs> Ikurriña. And then next to Ikurriña, we have Irribarre, uh, which is a smile. And that's actually one thing that I really like about Basque is the R. They're so, like, they're really strong. And here, whenever I speak Spanish, actually, people are like, Ciro, you're not in the Basque, like you're not speaking Basque. Can you can you say the R a little less? Because my R is quite strong also because it's it's like that in Finnish. So I really like to roll the R's. Um, so irribarre. Might be a bit challenging for people who don't have that R in their uh, language, native language, but it's it's nice to. <laughs> It's nice to say it. Um, so I'm not going to go into much detail about the, the history um, because there's quite a lot to tell and we have a limited amount of time. Um, but I'm going to give you like the main points in time just to have some kind of an image. So. Um, Usually people ask like, okay, if that if Basque is a language isolate, where does it come from? Like, where are the people here? Like how many 
like how many years before were the people here before other people came or did they come from somewhere else um did they just come from space or something so now the um, the most probable hypothesis is that they are pre-indo-european so basque is a pre-indo-european language which, which means that it was here before the indo-european speakers came and it is said to be um descendant uh from or like a yeah descendant from uh the uh, the language that the aquitani tribe spoke um there were quite a few and um this can be seen from like words that have been carved in like tomb tombstones and and other relics that have preserved um and based on like um names of gods and personal names and uh, place names as well and then it's also thought to be related to iberian um iberian is a language that is not very well known because um there are not that many texts left and it hasn't haven't like people haven't been able to <laughs> decipher yes but not really understand what the what it means um, but the numbers have been deciphered and they are the same as in Basque. So that's why people think that, um, or linguists think that it's related to Iberian. Uh, but we cannot really know for sure until we, well, not me, but, <laughs> but until linguists find like um, a bilingual text in Iberian that would open the language a bit to the linguists. And it has been quite isolated even though it's it's part of the peninsula but there are so many mountains and and then you have the the atlantic sea which is not very calm so though so the basque people have been isolated quite well and um and that's also shown uh in the in the genes um because like if you compare basque people to other people here in in spain uh, you can see that they have less genes from the peoples that came and conquered um, the peninsula, like the Moors from um, Northern Africa. So the Basque people apparently have less genes from them. And there was a recent study uh, in 2015 uh, where um, there were eight Stone Age human skeletons found in Northern Spain, and they were analyzed. And it looks like they were closely related to the modern day Basques. And it also supports the theory that um, uh, Basque people are descendants of Neolithic farmers um, who mixed with, with local hunter gatherers. Um, so it's an interesting thing that keeps on being studied. Um, and I'm going to jump a few thousand years. Uh, to Glossas Emilianenses, um, which were written in 1000, 1100, so a thousand years ago. Um, and that's, um, those are the first Basque words that have been actually like found written, if you don't count some tombstones. Um, so they were written in a manuscript, um, which was written in an, like an early form of Spanish or a Hispanic romance language and there are these six word sc words scribbled in in basque in the like next to the text so those are the first words um written in basque and the first uh book to be pr printed and published uh was uh, lingvae vasconum primitiae uh, in 1545 and it was uh, it was a collection of poems written by bernard Echepare um so that's the first printed um uh book in basque and then um i'm gonna jump a few hundred years um to an important event that has changed the well not the language but the people um a bit because um there was a time a few decades that um, basque was not allowed you can you couldn't speak basque um you couldn't study basque you couldn't read or write 
or you can you can basically do anything because of uh, Francisco Franco. Um, he was a Spanish general, and under his dictatorship, um, like he said that everything has to be in Spanish. So besides Basque people, um, Catalans and Galicians, they were not allowed to use their own language, which is quite strange because Fra uh, Franco himself was from Galicia. So, um, but Basque people, they were not allowed to use their language. Um, they were not allowed to give their children Basque names. And sometimes people even, I heard they had to change their names to like Spanish versions. And um, and they even had to rename or remove some tombstone engravings. So you were not allowed to use it at all. Um, and then in 1968, um, because people they haven't they hadn't used their language, and the the scholars they were afraid that it would like it, it it would be endangered or it would it would die so they thought that you they would have to unify make a unified basque in order to um ensure that it's going to be saved and preserved so um there was a um co like a conference or a congress in 1968 in Aransasu where they decided that there should be one um unified basque and batua actually means unified because bat is one and it's just <laughs> unified basque and that's what you hear in radio and tv and that's what you learn in school that's what i learned <laughs> and um and then um you can now you can study in basque in ikastolak you could also study before franco but now they are like um not in fashion but they are more popular now and ikastolak are uh, primary and secondary schools um where you can study mostly or completely in basque in the basque country and the first ikastola was opened in 1914 so it was well before franco but um during his uh, dictatorship they had to be closed or changed into spanish school so that you could only study in Spanish. Um, but I think there were some Igostolak who like continued to teach in Basque in secret. Um, and this photo here, uh, the photo here is uh, the tree of Guernica, Guernica Corbola. And it's uh, it's an important symbol for, for every Basque, uh, for traditional freedoms and um, and like the, um, the Lendagari, the president of the Basque country, swears his charge under it, um, like they did traditionally. And um, so it's in Guernica. Um, you might know the big black and white uh, painting from Picasso. And so that tells the story, sad story of the, of the city. Um, so that's a brief history. Um, you would need another presentation just for that. So that's a quick overview. And, uh, and then we get to the fun part, <laughs> um, the, the, the grammar, which is um, exciting, I would say. So the first thing when I Googled like 10 years ago, maybe, I was like, I'm going to Google Basque. Uh, Basque grammar, and the first thing I saw was this, and I was like, "Sorry, what? <laughs> uh, where is the nearest emergency exit?" Um, but it actually makes sense. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show this portion here a bit later and explain how it works. So, this is how the verbs work. But it it looks scary, but it's actually not. So, um, Basque grammar, it's an agglutinative language, um, which means that instead of putting each word separately, like in English or in Spanish or languages with like prepositions and, 
and nice things like that. Basque doesn't have them. Um, and I'm going to give you an example. So here is a sentence called that um, that means I'm at home with my dog. So nagonire chakurarekin. And um, I have broken it down for you so you can see the elements of the sentence. So um, I have color coded it. And for example, here you can see at home or in the home is echean. So you put everything together. You have the word for home, eche, and then the, um, the article. Uh, ah, and in is n in, in the in the word. And here, if you look at the the with arekin ending, you can see it here in the picture that I took in Guernica. So watch out for the train. So okay, be careful with the train. Tren arekin. It's here the same. And. Um, quite a few people, quite a few linguists are like, oh my God, I want to learn Basque because it's it has um, ergative and absolutive instead of nominative and accusative. And that was one of the main reasons also why I wanted to learn Basque, Not because it sounded beautiful and because of this. So what does it mean, actually? Uh, I have some um, examples here. So, uh, you are a student. Suk liburua dusu, you have the book, and suk apunteak ditusu, you have notes. And if you look at these sentences, um, they more or less look the same in English, but here you can notice that this is su here, and suk in these ones, and here the verb, like the verbs are different. And that is because. For example, this one, you are a student. That's an intransitive sentence, which means that it doesn't have an object, like a direct object. Um, so here you can see the absolutive doesn't have a, a case ending. Uh, so I marked it here with this one. And here you see the, the um, uh, article again. Um, and Sara is you are. But the difference between you are a student and you have the book is that you have the book, you have an object because you have the book. So it uses a different um, grammatical structure. So here uh, in Basque, the, the object, like if you have something, if you think from like an Indo-European point of view, you would think that you like act as the object. So you could think like, the book is held by me. And like you have to think a bit differently with Basque, and that's why I really like it. So, in case you haven't learned any ergative absolutive language, um, it might take a while to get used to, it, but it's not that complicated. So here you see the ergative ending, k, okay, which most students for keep forgetting. I admit I sometimes forget the the k ending. And the absolutive, here is the object, and um, so liburua doesn't have an ending. And here you see the uh, the verb to have, or you have, dusu. And you, you might see this one here and wonder why, what, is there going to be something in the verb? And, ta-da! Because here you have many notes. You have the uh, plural ending here, which looks like the ergative ending, um, and it's it can be confusing. So you have to look at the verb. So you see that you have you are the person who has the notes, and that there are many because there's the plural ending. In case you didn't notice it here, <laughs> so the verbs are um something that might take a while to get used to but it's they they are very logical and there are several grammatical cases because it's an agglutinative language 
And um, here are some examples because I have studied Basque for three years. We still haven't learned all of them. So here are just some examples just to see how how it works. So like and and um, like proper names are kind of like they take case endings as well. So if I do something or if I um, if I give something to someone or if I have something, it's siruk in the sentence or um, if it's my book, it's uh, siruren uh, liburua. And mm, 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 yeah, yeah, it's just to show that there are quite a few different ones and these are not everything, like all of them, because we still have a few to learn. And we get to the nice uh, graphic that I showed for, uh, before. And this is called Nornorinork. And when I started learning Basque, we were like, oh, Nornorinork, you're going to have so much fun. And it took us two years to actually get to Nornorinork because there were so many things we had to learn before that. And Nornorinork basically means sentences where you have a subject, a direct object, and an indirect object. So here you see the indicative present and you see these letters here. So I have some examples for you. Um, so it's basically people telling other people good jokes in my, in my examples. So I have color coded them again. For example, in the first sentence, Nick suri chisteona kontatsen disut, I tell you a good joke. So here you see Nick. It's an ergative because I am doing something. Suri to you. And disut. Um, uh, this, this is like the auxiliary verb to contatu, uh, which is to tell. And here you see su in blue because it's here. Um, to whom? It, you. In, in Basque, the. the um, uh, pronoun, uh, yeah, pronouns go in different order, so that's why it's here, su, and not like um, after the first person singular. So sut, because it's to you, and then t, because I'm the one telling. And so the next one uh, is nik suri chisteona kontatsen diskisut. So here you see again, to you, I am doing something. But then you also have the plural here, which you can see here in the in the table, and so on. Like for example, um, like here, Michele Kiusuri chiste una contatsen dio. So you know that it was uh, Michele Michel who said something. It doesn't have a, a an ending here, but it was to someone else. So dio. And we tell you, many of you, good jokes. So it's uh, diskisuegu, which can be a, a mouthful. And and it's still like when when we have to talk in the class, and then you say something like this, and and then you think like, okay, who's giving? Like who's doing something? Who's like to who? And are there many or one things? And it's it takes a while, but it's very logical. And um, and we have just recently learned it in the past tense, <laughs> and there are quite a few other versions or tenses and and um, like um, conditionals and many things to look forward to. And um, I also wanted to tell you about the numbers uh, because in Basque it goes by like twenties. Um, so many people who have learned French know that, ah, oh, 80s, uh, 240s, but in ba Basque they're like, but wait, there's more. Um, so for example, until 20, it's it's like, you would imagine, like here you have Amar, which is 10, and it repeats in like 11, 12, Amaika, Amabi, Amairu. But then after 20, you have 21, 22, blah, blah, blah. And then you get to 30, which is uh, 20 and 10. Eta is and. So 20 and 10. 
20 and 11, 20 and 12. And then you get to 40, which is 2 times 12, uh, 20. So, verro gay. 42 is uh, 2 times 20 and 1. Verro <laughs> tabat. And then you get to 50, which is 2 times 20 and 10. So it's, um, and then 80 is 4 times 20. And it's, uh, we played a lot of bingo when we learned the numbers. <laughs> and here is an example of, of a bigger number that you would imagine that's 3,333, like, like it is in English. And in most languages I've learned, but in Basque, it literally translates to 3,32013. ,3 so it's um, big numbers are a mouthful. Um, I guess you would like to learn a few words. I hope you do. Um, I have some examples here, useful ones. So, kaisho is hello, agur, bye, egunon, good day or good morning. And Kawon, good night. Uh, Isenadut, uh, is, my name is. So, for example, Siru Isenadut. Um, and here you would have to put Nick because you're some, you have something. So, Nick, Siru Isenadut. But you don't have to say it. Um, you don't have to put the Nick uh, before the name because you can see the person from the verb. Uh, Ni, nice. So, Ni Siru, nice. And here you have a very Nice example of of a like a joke in Basque. Um, I feel nice, and if you saw here, nice as I am, so I feel nice. Kaisho, I feel ni Mikel nice. <laughs> I'll just show myself out. Um, Mercedes is please. Bye, yes. Uh, es no, and Sergatik why. Um, Barcatu. Sorry, Eskeri Kasko, thank you. Uh, it means actually a lot of thanks. Um, eso regatik, it's kind of like de nada in Spanish. Um, maite saitut, I love you. And garagardobat, meseres, a beer, please. Uh, zer dao, what is this? Euskara ikasi nairut, I want to learn Basque. Oso polita sara, you are very beautiful. And the classic, Nire Airola Baingalua Angires Beteta Dago. My hovercraft is full of eels. And this is uh, from Omniglot. And you never know when it's uh, when it can be useful. So it's good to learn. And um, this is uh, something that I want to show uh, about how beautiful Basque is. So here are some words and the actual meaning behind them. So, for example, biots. Um, comes from um, B and Ots, so two sounds like tutum, tutum, like the heart does, so it's a heart. And Maite Mindu uh, is uh, like it means to be hurt by love, but it means to fall in love. And um, Iliargi, moon, actually means the light of the dead. And Otsail is uh, the, the month of the wolf, so February. And musutruk, it means in exchange for a kiss, but it, it, it means for free. And suiltsalje is um, a fire assassin, so firefighter. And uh, sukalle, uh, next to the fire, so kitchen. And amona, which is a good mother, but it it means a grandmother. So these are some examples of the beautiful words that you see sometimes and you're like, oh, that meaning is so nice. Um, and I think it, it's just, it's really beautiful. Like for example, biots. It's, it's, uh, it's a nice, a nice word. I think it's time for questions. So, how well do you understand the various non-Batua dialects, especially the ones spoken in France? I don't know how Basque people 
actually how well they understand the other dialects, but um, it has happened to me that I've gone to a pub or a taverna in the Basque country. And um, when they find out that I speak Basque, they get really excited and they start talking in their dialect. And I'm like, oh, you, you, yeah. So if I see it written, I understand it quite well. But if it's spoken, I might have to ask them to repeat, especially because I'm not fluent in Basque. So it can be challenging. Um, do you know any short poem or can you sing a little piece of a song in Basque? <laughs> um, um, well, there are quite a few poems. We have them during the class sometimes and there are quite a few songs. Um, but there is a, a famous song by Gensaspi uh, called Iliargia, Moon. And um, if you go to my Instagram, you will see me and hear me sing a part of it. Liboro looks like a long word from Spanish. How much has Spanish affected Basque vocabulary in general? It has, it has quite a lot and Liboro is a long word. So there are quite a few long words in Basque. Um, and also sometimes they are not masked, but like they have been in the in the language so long that it really you like sometimes I don't even make the connection. I've studied most of the Romance languages. Like for example, uh Gela is a room and it comes from the same Latin word that is used, for example, in in English in cell. So it comes from Latin. And like radio is irratia. And um there are quite a few loan words from Spanish, but then also Spanish has taken some from Basque as well, like, for example, izquierda, the left, because it's esquerra in Basque. So there are quite a few loan words. That's also, that could be a topic for another talk. How necessary do you think it is for a student to learn a natural dialect in addition to Batua? It's, I think um, if you are a Basque stu student, you will most likely at least understand, like for example, if your grandparents talk to you because they are most likely to talk in their dialect. And also like, for example, you notice a difference when you go to uh, San Sebastián Donostia in Gibuzkoa, and then you go to Bilbao in Vizcaya, you hear there's a difference. and also like we have had different teachers from from, from Gibuzkoa and Vizcaya and there is a there's a difference um i think it would be useful to learn or at least some um but i think it depends on the on the interest like if if you actually want to move to the Basque country maybe it would be good to learn at least some of the dialect they speak Uh, can you explain my tesaitut grammatically? I was actually expecting this. Um, so, besides uh, nor nor inork, there's nor nork, uh, which means a direct object, subject and a direct object. And this is also something we learned this year. Um, so, maite is love. So, I have love for you. Uh, saitut. Um, so the tut in the end means that I have something and uh, side is to you or like that's, um, <laughs> it, it's clear in my head, but I cannot get it out right now. But it's, uh, it's, you can see it from the verb that it's something I have for you, which is love, maite. Does Batua's orthography reflect the phonological differences of the um, five dialects? Um, they made um, Batua mostly from the central dialects, 
So from Guipuzcoa and Navarra and um, the one that's like in France, which is not Suberotarra. Um, and they, they mostly reflect like how it's pronounced there. Um, and they had to make like choices like like in uh, in Italian, for example. So they kind of had to choose like what to take from which dialect. I haven't learned about the dialects that much yet, so I cannot give you a very detailed answer. Yet. Do you sometimes get the impression that Basque and Finnish could be related in any way? Um, there are some similarities, like the like how partitive works. Um, like if you ask, do you have chocolate? In Basque, it would be chocolate would be chocolaterik, and um, it would um, it's it's it works the same in in Finnish, and then also um, some some grammatical things are the same, which makes it really easy for me to understand some difficult things, whereas all the other people in my in my class, for example, who are native Spanish speakers are like, uh, what is this? So there are some similarities, but they are, um, they are not related. I can see that. Does modern Batua still display preference for coining uh, house instead of using direct loan words? Um, yes, there are. Um, I guess it depends on the field as well, but there are quite a few modern words that um, are made in Basque. Um, some some words come from Spanish and like half Spanish, half Basque. Like for example, um, a computer is ordena gallua, so ordenador in Spanish, and then gallua like a machine. So, so um, as I'm not a native speaker, I don't really know the words in all of the fields, but I would imagine um, uh, that they prefer to have a spa Basque word instead of just taking the, the directly from other language. And there are no more questions. Um, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Eskeri Kasko. And in case you have more questions, you can contact me in private. Um, I'm fairly easy to find on social media. So thank you, Eskeri Kasko. Eta agur.